Plaza Machado is located right down the street from Mercado Machado. Mark and I took two buses to arrive in Mazatlan from San Luis Potosí. San Luis Potosí to Guadalajara about six hours. The cost was 402 pesos times two with our Inapam discount senior card, about $48.17 US cents. Um, we visited Mazatlan for 10 days. The uh, altitude is at sea level, of course. And the population in 2017 showed about 500,000, and it was founded in May of 1531. We're walking around Plaza Republica, which is just a beautiful plaza, also in the older part of Mazatlan. Uh, the grounds are very nicely kept. Um, it was lined with restaurants on at least two sides. We're coming up on a statue that's a leftover from Carnival. Uh, these statues are made of a very thick paper mache, so although they're beautiful, unfortunately, they will not withstand the test of time. Our two friends gave us a tour of the town. Now, Mark and I would have never known this side of Mazatlan existed. This is more of the old town central, and I thought it was really quite nice. Um, as you can see, it's really wide to walk on here by the park. A lot of greenery, um, the gazebo restaurant coming up right here. As we continue the tour of central, like historical here in Mazatlan, you'll see that there's tons of color on the buildings and it's just, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Yeah, I thought it was very beautiful. It totally took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting this yeah, me at too. all. Me too. Mark and I stayed in Mazatlan just for uh, a night twice. So we never got to see this part of Mazatlan at all. We were on the beach for the night. Here is a bust of Albert Einstein. Everyone needs one. We came across this gallery that was really cool inside. We'll show you. There was a lot of artwork in here. Of course, it's for sale. Some beautiful beadwork there. Uh, here's some more beadwork. Here we have decorative coconut shells. I think it's pretty cool. What house is not complete without this unique lamp? The skeleton right here, paper mache. I thought this gallery was really cool. A lot of interesting and unique things in there. Yeah, they had the plants all over and it was obviously, it looks like an old style hacienda at one time or something. Here we are back out on the streets of the older part of Mazatlan, which I thought were just beautiful with the, the Hakaranda tree that you see there um, and basically just tree-lined streets. Uh, it really Im impressed me. I thought it was very beautiful. In some ways kind of reminded me of some parts of Durango. Yeah, it reminded me kind of of uh, Merida. This restaurant right here was very cool as we take you inside. Our friends recommended that we come back and have a meal here, but we never got the chance to do it. Yeah, I would say even if you're not gonna eat though, come in and check it out. It's really very beautiful inside.
Here we are back out on the street to enjoy some colonial architecture and some bright colors on these buildings. It really is worth walking these streets just to take in all of the different color and the architectural style. Um, I really enjoyed it. Everything was just well maintained. Yeah, exactly. We came across this really colorful street. It was at the end of Campania Centro. When we got to the top, this was the view. Yeah, it was absolutely spectacular. The streets, again, just lined with beautiful greenery, color. I loved that this area it was one of my favorites. Yeah, it really spoke to me too. I'm so glad that we took the time and so glad we were able to tour with our friends. Anyone in need of a yellow submarine? Good price. We all live in a yellow submarine. When we left the historical area, we came upon this restaurant. Isn't it gorgeous? And then this was on the side of a building walking down the Malacan. Yeah, and here we are on the Malacan. This is the area on the Malacan where the cliff divers perform. It's located between Los Pinos and Olas Altas. They only perform on days when cruise ships are in port. Tradition of the cliff diving in Mazatlan dates back to the mid-1900s when the platform that is still used today was constructed on the Malacan. Anybody up for a boat ride? Maybe a three-hour tour? This is the area called the Shrimp Ladies. There's different sized shrimp that you can get. There's fish, there's tons of it. It's many vendors that are there selling their daily uh, catches of the day. Uh, we ended up getting two, no, we ended up getting what, honey? Uh, one. One kilo. One kilo, yeah. And um, that was quite a lot for two people at 200 pesos per kilo which is about 13 U.S. dollars. Next up, we headed across the street to have this shrimp cooked up. The prices, as you can see, are right outside the restaurant. And the interesting thing is, is that you can have your shrimp cooked different ways. Like our friend had it um, breaded. We had ours with garlic and butter. And what happens is the waitress comes around, she gives you like a little menu of different ways that you could have it prepared, and the cost is all the same. It's a half a kilo, a whole kilo, two kilos, whatever. Yeah, and you, you can see the restaurant was very busy. However, I will say there was a live band playing in there, and it was really loud. Very loud. I mean, I needed earplugs. While we were there, it was Trek Week in Mazatlan. By the way, the Malacan is 13 miles long. While we were there, we walked about half of it one day and about three miles of it the next day? Yeah, I think we walked about three and a half miles one day, the upper half, and then the lower half the next day, about three and a half miles. 
This blue area that you see runs along the Malacan, and that's for like bicycles, skateboarders, scooters, things like that, not pedestrian walking. The streets that lined the Malacan, while they were crosswalks, they were very difficult to cross because there weren't many stoplights along that stretch of the road. These are what's known as pulmonia taxis and they are unique to Mazatlan. They're basically souped up taxis um, that are very well lit up at night. Most have stereos that play fairly loudly with the music cranked up. They have been around since the early 1960s and they are iconic in Mazatlan. You can use them to tour around town, you just have to negotiate a price with the driver. They seat four people typically. These red trucks you can also hire to tour you around town and they typically seat six or so passengers. And here I am seated in a statue of Pomonia on the Malacan. We're at the Alfaro Lighthouse, constructed in 1879. The Alfaro Lighthouse in Mazatlan is the second highest lighthouse in the world. It is located on a hill at the entrance of the port of Mazatlan. You can visit the lighthouse during the day and by taking a 745 meter hike up a gravel road and then 336 paved stairs. The path to the lighthouse is normally open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. In 2018, the glass bottom lookout was built on the top of El Faro. You can take off your shoes and wear socks or the provided feet protectors to go out onto the lookout. You are allowed three minutes on the glass bottom lookout. We saw some stray cats on the path. The path starts out flat and paved. Along the path there are a few areas where you can stop and rest if you need to, which I needed to. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart, I would say. <laughs> yeah. The younger you are, the better. Um, but uh, it's definitely worth going to. When we were walking up there, we did see an area where flowers were, which is uh, a symbol of where somebody had died on that path. The whole thing took us about three hours from the wait time to get in. They only take so many people at a time um, to, to walking up the path, to climbing the steps, and the steps do bend a lot. The path just continues bending throughout the whole thing. Uh, there was a section where you can buy water and sports drinks. However, there's also a sign posted that says that there are no bathrooms. So be careful on how much you drink because you won't be able to use a bathroom until you get down to where you started. Drink at your own risk. We rode the Sabalo bus to the end, which led us out at the entry to the lighthouse walkway. It is free to go up to the lighthouse on the hill. You just can't walk on the glass walkway. We visited the aquarium opened in April of 2023 called the Grand Aquaria. It is the largest aquarium in Mexico located in Mazatlan's 75 acre central park. There are 26 unique habitats that show biodiversity of the Sea of Cortez. The aquarium is open from 9.30 to 5.00. The cost is 100 pesos for adults, about five or six dollars, and three dollars for children. Here we are in the aviary, which, which is pretty big. They have a lot of birds in here. A lot of parrots, macaws, double yellow heads. Really pretty interesting to look at. We saw a bunch of kids in here checking it out with their families. Here we are at the entrance to the aquarium. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are 34 saltwater tanks and 17 freshwater aquariums. 
Visitors can admire a wealth of marine life at the Mazatlan Aquarium. Interactive highlights include shows featuring tropical birds, as well as live feeding of nurse sharks and surgeon fish. Beyond the underwater attractions, there's also a walk through aviaries and a crocodile lagoon. The Mazatlan Aquarium is open daily from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and live animal shows are held three times a day. Check the schedules online for exact timings. The aquarium will likely be busier during school holidays and on weekends, so it's best to visit midweek for a quieter experience. The aquarium is located on Avenida de los Deportes, just a few blocks from the Mazatlan Malecon. One of the ways to get to the aquarium is that you can take the Sabalo City Green Bus there. The cost was either 13 or 14 pesos. I say that because we heard 15, then we got 2 pesos back, so then the next time we rode into the town we paid 14 pesos and also got 2 pesos back. So I'm unsure of the true price. The aquarium, I thought, was really amazing. You got to see a lot of uh, different types of fish, uh, sharks, things like that. The tanks were amazing to look at. Um, really pretty cool. We saw different, many different types of sea life there. Uh, we really enjoyed it, or at least I did anyway. That one area where the sharks were, it was like a like a walk-through area that was glass overhead and um, it was very cool how the sharks were just all hovering in one area. Yeah, as you look up, they were hovering yeah. over our heads. Uh, pretty cool. The only thing I wish is that the TVs weren't reflecting onto the tanks. But um, other than that, I mean, it was well worth it. I'm glad we did this for sure. The only thing that could have made it even more spectacular is if they had a whale shark in there. Yeah, that would be a pretty big <laughs> tank for a whale shark. <laughs> True, but, but that would have been awesome. You can dream. Um, and I also wanted to mention that this is the largest aquarium in all of Mexico. The aquarium is home to 260 marine species. The cost to build the aquarium was 1.6 billion pesos at the time, 99.3 million dollars U.S. They had a lot of jellyfish on display too. And then there was this crawl through cubby hole to where you could actually get inside an area that is surrounded by the tank. Sure you count your fingers when you're done. Along the part of the Malacan close to the uh, older part of Mazatlan, there aren't really any restaurants up at street level. You have to go downstairs onto a beach to be able to get to a restaurant. I think this would be a great place to have a sunset dinner though. Uh, walking along this part of the beach is pretty interesting. There are a few restaurants here. Uh, and coming up, the fellow in the blue shirt on your right is selling donuts. Um, so I don't know if that's glaze on the donuts or sand, but we did not have any. 
We did notice that on the weekends, it was much more crowded on the beaches and along the Malacan, which makes sense. It's a touristy area, and that's going to happen on the weekends when people aren't working or visitors that come for the weekend. Or tourists, or when cruise ships come in. Oh, cruise ships, yeah, I forgot about cruise ships. We did notice along the Malacan there is a lot of construction going on there. Uh, I don't know if they're condos or resorts or what, but um, as you can see in this picture and some drone video that I have coming up, there's building going on everywhere along the Malacan. As far as cleanliness goes for this area, I thought the city was pretty well kept. Um, the only litter that I really noticed that really bothered me was on the beaches. People were not picking up after themselves. Yeah, that was unfortunate because the, the beach really, for the most part, was a beautiful place as you can see by the uh, video here. And again, pointing out the all of the new construction going on there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nice, I would agree. It was very clean other than the beach area. Mazatlan was very walkable. Most of it was flat. Uh, the only part that had really any hills to it was in the, the older part, but uh, the sidewalks were nice. They were good and wide, um, well-maintained for the most part. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. I mean, uh, walking was pretty easy there. Most of it was very flat, not a problem at all. Um, and if you wanted to take a taxi, you're welcome to do that too. You want to take the local bus, you're welcome to do that too. Yeah, I think the public transportation is actually pretty good there. Uh, at least we found it to be anyway. Yeah, I mean, it took us to several of our destinations. Yeah, just by getting on the green bus. And by the way, the green bus we're talking about is the Sabalo City Bus. And a lot of them, really the only part that's painted green is the very front. We stayed at a hotel called um, La Lola, and that was uh, like hotel and suites, and it was very loud the whole time that we were there in the evenings. Right, we were only about a half block off the Malacan, which was part of the attraction. We just didn't realize just how loud the Malacan is. Well, and there was truck week and we had no idea of that either. That's true. Uh-oh, watch out for the parasailer. Another thing that we noticed while we were there, and again, we don't live in Mazatlan, so we can't say for sure, but we did notice that the traffic on the main boulevard of where the Malacan is was very um, congested on the weekends for sure. And I don't know if that had anything to do with the truck week or not. We were told that there's always something going on on a Malacan by our friends and it is absolutely true. There was a lot of stuff going on there. I didn't really realize how big Mazatlan was until I saw this next shot with the drone video overlooking the city. Uh, it's it's pretty good size. I was surprised. Next up, the Golden Zone. Now the Golden Zone is where you'll find most of the resorts. There were also there was a lot of shopping there, a lot of restaurants, a lot of bars, a lot of people. No, I agree. Uh, we only spent oh, a couple of hours walking along there, and it was it was pretty cool. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good scene altogether. Mark stopped to have a michelada while I decided to go in a lot of these shops and check them out and of course buy a few things. Okay, so my question to you is your final impressions and would you return? Uh, I like Mazatlan. Uh, I don't really know that I would need to return there again because there were just other beach communities that I like better but uh, I'm glad that I went and experienced it. Yeah, me too. Um, my final impression was the Malacan was very cool. There was a lot of things to see off of it, um, which we did, like I said, we discovered that old part that we didn't even know yeah. existed, which yeah. was a real highlight for that me. Was, yeah, that was the crown jewel of yeah. this for me. Yeah, I, I think so too, because you never see that from mm -hmm. the Malacan area. All you see are resorts, mm -hmm. you know, hotels, and the beach. 
Um, so that was really refreshing to find. Um, would I return again? Um, I don't know, maybe. Um, I mean, we have so many places to see yeah. and do, but I'm really glad that we went there. I mean, that's, that's what I'm gonna say. I'm really glad that we went there. Would I return again? I don't know, maybe. I will say that the sunsets were pretty spectacular. If you guys enjoyed our video, we hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Two Travelers in Mexico. And uh, we hope that you leave a comment below. If there's other places that you would like us to travel to, that would be great. Leave a comment below. We also have a Facebook page, also called The Two Travelers in Mexico. You do have to ask to join and answer a few questions. It is a private page. And as always, from The Two Travelers in Mexico, what she did. Bye.